In this tutorial, I'm going to run through the techniques used in these flip top mitts. The pattern is by Vanessa Ewing, and this tutorial is brought to us by Kramer Yarns and their Perfection Worsted, which is an awesome yarn. I've used Perfection DK and Perfection Worsted in a lot of tutorials now, and I love it because it's a merino blend, so it knits up like wool, but it is machine washable, machine dryable, it comes in a bajillion colors, and it's a great value. If you'd like to get your kit to follow along, you can click the little eye in the upper right hand corner, or if you're on mobile, you can click the video description field, um, click the video uh, link in the video description field below, and I'll have a link to my website where I'll have a link to the kit, as well as the pattern on its own. And like I said, this comes in so many colors that whenever I work with this yarn, instead of like shopping through the colors and see what I think looks pretty, I always go in with an idea of the color I want and just find it because there's that many colors available. And Kramer, they're, they're the nicest folks. I love working with them. Okay, back to this pattern. This, um, the kit, let's do that first. The kit that you order, which is like I said, a great value, comes with the pattern yarn as well as the buttons and when I knit mine up I didn't know the, that this came with the buttons until someone who had already ordered the kit told me that they love the buttons too I believe they're wood buttons I actually um, went through my button box and found these which I like it's not a problem but just want to let you know what's available in the kit um, the pattern is five different sizes five that is so many sizes Thank you, Vanessa, for giving us so many sizes. I believe the smallest size is a small adult size, not a kid size, but I do know the largest size will fit a guy. I had my knitter friend, Steven, measure his hand, and it is a man size um, mitt in the largest size. So, and, and these are actually, mine um, are an adult small. Yes, mine are an adult small. Okay. Um, but I'm going to show you how to measure your hand to get it just right. Uh, this Kramer has this pattern listed as an intermediate pattern. And that seems about right. I'm going to try to break it down to make it more accessible to even advanced beginners here in this tutorial. But if you're brand new to knitting small, small tubes in knitting or mittens and uh, you kind of want to build up to this, I'm going to recommend my Easy Fingerless Mitts pattern, and I'll give you a link here and here to, to that pattern. It's free. It's knit out of worsted weight yarn. It go, they go really quickly. They knit up, knit up super quickly. Make those and then move on to these if you're brand new to mittens. Um, and the last thing I want to say is uh, Vanessa writes this pattern. Well, no, she doesn't write this pattern for Magic Loop. She recommends using a long circular like in the uh, in the tools that you need she says long two long circular sizes um, but the pattern isn't written for magic loop you can use whatever needles you like to use when you're knitting small tubes so I'm going to demonstrate this in with magic loop as well as DPNs and short circulars I think the only one I'm leaving out are flexible double points or flexi flips and that's only because I don't have them in sizes big enough for these. I should get those though, because I really like um, flexible double points. Um, but I'm gonna show you in everything else. So whatever your method is for um, knitting small diameter tubes, you can use that, this pattern will work. Although I will say, when it comes down to knitting just a few stitches, um, like for the thumb, DPNs are really the easiest. I really think that's true. I wish more people would get over their fear of DPNs, because they're not so bad. Um, what was the last thing I was going to say here? Oh, the thumb. I had this thumb, my thumb in my hand so I wouldn't forget. The pattern gives you two options for the thumb. I've knit the whole thumb here, but you can stop the thumb kind of halfway to leave it free so you can use your device or whatever else um, with your whole hand. It's up to you. The pattern includes instructions for both. Okay, I've been talking and talking and I'm sure you're excited to get started with these. First up, we're going to choose a size and um, well, just kind of get started on the mitts. Coming up. Okay, we are ready to get started on the mitts. I'm going to start out on DPNs. We're going to talk about size. We're going to take a close-up look at the mitts themselves. So let's take a look. Okay, here we are with the finished mitts. And you'll see we start off with a 
knit one through the back, purl one rib, which makes the ribbing really stand out. Um, the knit stitches are really prominent. And then we have the button and the little cable top. That unbuttons and the whole thing flips over to keep the fingers warm. And I want to show you one other thing. This is a sample I'm using later, so the ends aren't woven in, but this is what the half thumb looks like if you want to have free fingers and thumb. And I made a mistake in just the last section. I said that all the sizes were adult sizes. I was wrong. The smallest size is actually a toddler size, and it goes up from there. I'm sorry about that. I'll make sure I get that corrected everywhere I can. I want to show you how to measure. Um, it gives inches for a hand circumference. And the easiest thing to do is to measure the widest part of your hand right here. I'm going to hold on to that tape measure and wind it around. And my, let me get this right. The size that I knit was for seven inches around, and you can see I'm just about right there at seven inches around, and that's the adult small that I knit for myself. So that's how you're gonna measure. And the, the largest size is eight and a quarter, which is the size that fit my friend Steven. So I know it'll fit a guy. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is getting started with the twisted rib. And I have my Perfection Worsted here, and this happens to be color Evening Song. I'm going to start off on double pointed needles. These are Knitter's Pride Ginger needles. And I want to show you how to get started with double pointed needles um, in the round for this twisted rib. I'm using the long tail cast on. This is the way I do the long tail cast on because I feel like it gives me the best control of the tension. And I'll give you a link in the video description field to this cast on if it's new to you. You are going to cast on the number for your size. The main thing I want to show you here is doing the next needle with double pointed needles. I'm going to wrap my thumb, take the next needle, Put it in the loop of my thumb, wrap it, flip it over, pull it through, and then really make sure that that's tight. Really tug on both ends there so there's, you can eliminate the gap between the needles. And I'm going to show you that again. Wrap the yarn around my thumb. Put that needle in there, wrap it and pull it through, and then really tug on both ends. Okay. Hopefully I've cast on an even number of stitches because if you've watched my videos, I cannot count and talk at the same time. I'm going to trim my tail a little bit there. And now to get started with the double pointed needles, I want to make sure nothing's twisted. All of my knots are on the inside here. And I'm going to use this yarn to knit this stitch. And when I do, it'll close it up into a circle. I like this needle to be under that one when I get started. And this is a knit through the back loop, purl one rib. So instead of putting my needle in the normal way, I'm going to go through the back loop of that stitch and make sure you give that first stitch a good tug. Then yarn forward to purl one, yarn back to knit through the back loop. And the first round or row after the cast on is always the stiffest. It's always the slowest. And then 
pearl one. And the thing I want to show you here is when you're working on double pointed needles, you know, the phone's going to ring, you're going to put this back in the bag, your knitting bag, and when you come back to it, all you see are wind chimes. Like, how do you get going again? <laughs> That's what I want to talk about here. Find your working yarn and put it, the working yarn over to the right in your right hand. The stitch to the left of the working yarn is your next stitch. And knowing that will keep you from getting, from accidentally uh, knitting inside out or skipping a needle, <laughs> which I've seen people do. You're just going to start right up again with knitting through the back loop and yarning forward to purl one. Okay, that's going to give you that awesome prominent rib, which looks so good in this pattern. Okay, that's how you're going to get going. You're going to follow the instructions in, for your size to knit the cuff. And then next we are going to talk about the gusset increases. And I'm switching to Magic Loop here because I promised you I would show a bunch of different needles and how to do this. And the Magic Loop is a long circular that lets me knit this little tube. <clears throat> and I have uh, a stitch marker here just to mark the beginning of my round so that I know between these two needles is the beginning of my round. And for this, I'm going to need a couple of stitch markers. And I just threw a stitch marker on the floor. Oh no. I wanted to find it because that's going to end up in a dog's mouth if I don't find it. Okay. And to do the magic loop, I'm going to pull the back needle long because this is going to be my first stitch. I want this wrapped around so I can get to it. And to get started with Whoops, I'm on the wrong page. I'm trying to follow, make sure I follow the pattern exactly here so I don't get questions. So it's not confusing, right? I'm going to knit two stitches. This is the setup round for the gusset. Place a marker. Make one left. I'm going to pull up the bar between those two stitches, put it up on the needle. Um, after I have it up, I'm going to put it up on the needle from back to front and knit through the back loop of that stitch. I just split the stitch. There we go. And then I'm going to knit two and make one right. Pull that stitch up and put my needle in from back to front and knit it through the front loop. And if make one stitches are new to you, I will give you a link to my slow motion make one um, video because it's important to get make one right and left correct so that you don't end up with gaps in your mittens. And then I'm going to place a marker. And you'll just knit around the rest of the way. And I want to get to the second half of the stitches so we can do the magic loop. Flip it over. Pull the front needle in because I'm going to knit this stitch next. I need it close to the tip of the needle. I think I pulled that first stitch too hard because that was hard to slide. And then pull the back needle long so that I can start knitting the next half. And I'm going to watch the tension on this first stitch. You see how I struggled to get these stitches scooched up to the tip and it's because I pulled this last stitch too hard on that first stitch. I mean, it's not a disaster, but it didn't. My knitting didn't flow very well right there while I was trying to scooch those stitches. Okay. 
So that was the setup round. We have the markers placed, and then we're going to work two plain rounds. You're going to definitely want to keep track of where you are with this with a row counter. And then we have increase round, two plain rounds, increase round, two plain rounds, and you're going to follow the directions in the pattern for your size because the thumb gusset is different lengths for different sizes. And you end up with something that looks like this. You have a bunch of stitches between the markers and you can see we have these lines here where the, the increases are. I'm on short circulars this time and that's the beginning of my round and my two markers marking the thumb gusset. So continue on with those three rounds until you get to the instructions for your size and that's it for the bottom of the hand section. So go ahead and finish up the gusset increases and stop there because in the next section it is all about the thumb. That's all we're going to do is just the thumb. Okay, if you've finished up the gusset increases for the thumb, we are ready to dive into everything else about the thumb. This is the thumb section. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are back at this green sample and I told myself I was gonna be really good about mentioning all the needles I'm using. These that I used in the last section are collage square needles from an interchangeable set. Very beautiful. And the ones I'm using here are Chiaogu shorties from an interchangeable set. This is the blue set with the larger size needles. Okay, we have finished knitting the gusset and we're ready to reserve the thumb stitches and this is what that means. We want to get the thumb stitches on a piece of scrap yarn so that we can finish knitting the hand and come back to the thumb stitches later. So we need to get these on scrap yarn and this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to finish this round, slip my marker, and I have a marker here um, just because I'm knitting on circulars. I wouldn't have a marker if I was on double pointed needles or magic loop. <clears throat> so I'm going to remove the first marker and get my tapestry needle. I know someone's going to ask, this is a magnetic needle case that came in a quilting box that I get. I'll try to find a link to it because I use this all the time now. And I am going to slip these stitches onto a piece of scrap yarn. It's best to use a piece of scrap yarn that is a different color than your mitts. And just slide those off the needle and onto the scrap yarn. And you can remove the second marker too. So those stitches are safe. We're going to ignore them. We're going to keep going on without them. But we're going to <clears throat> cast on two stitches over the gap, over where these stitches used to be. And to do that, we're going to use the backwards loop cast on. So put the yarn, the working yarn, in your left hand with your thumb on the yarn like this and flip. Put your needle in that loop and tighten it up and one more time. So that's a backwards loop cast on for two stitches. It's not the greatest cast on in the world but it's easy and handy when we have only one strand of yarn to work with. And I want to knit a few stitches so we can talk about this. And just carry on knitting as before. And you'll notice that things look kind of wonky with that backwards loop cast on. Don't stress out about this. This is going to not only improve on the next round, but we're going to fix things up. Anytime you have a change of direction in your knitting like we're going to have here, things will kind of look funny, but, and especially with the backwards loop cast on, but don't stress out about that because we're going to fix that later. Okay. So after you reserve the thumb stitches, you're going to follow the instructions for finishing the hand 
you're going to switch two smaller needles again and go back to the knit through the back loop purl one ribbing and Vanessa tells us in this pattern to bind off loosely and I'll tell you that my trick for binding off loosely is to not bind off loosely but to put a needle two sizes bigger in my right hand and do the bind off with a needle two sizes bigger. That way I get a, a consistent loose bind off because if I use the needle size I was using and focus on binding off loosely, I, it never looks as tidy as it does when I just do a normal bind off with a bigger needle because I, I, I don't know if I get tighter or looser or whatever, it just never looks quite right. Okay, so you're gonna finish, follow the instructions to finish the hand, and you can do that with no problem. I don't have to demonstrate that. But now we're gonna go back to the thumb, because this is the thumb section of the video, right? We're going to put these stitches on the needles and finish it, and um, the instructions for the beginning here are the same whether you're doing the full closed thumb or the little half thumb, so we're gonna cover that here. <clears throat> what I wanna do, I'm gonna use DPNs for this, is to slide the stitches back onto the needle, just following the path of the scrap yarn. And the last two are always tricky. And here's something I do. The last, the last one always totally collapses in on itself. So I take the two ends of the scrap yarn on the either side of that stitch and pull to get that stitch back out of its hidey hole. Then get your needle in there. Then once you have them back on the needle, just give the scrap yarn a tug and get it out of there. Okay, so we're back to wind chimes here. It's a little bit easier DPNs this way than when you're starting out because nothing can get twisted this time. Everything is going to stay put. I'm going to get my working yarn ready here and remember how we cast on those two stitches at the beginning of the, the round or um, over the gap right here? We're going to pick up two stitches from there. Pick up and knit. And you can see where the two stitches that you cast on are. I'm going to try one right here. This is my method for doing it. I put the needle in there and get my yarn, leave myself about a six inch tail, wrap it and pull it through, and then give it a tug. If you see a huge gap there, you probably want to pick up a different space you know find somewhere else to pick up but mine looks pretty good and if there's a little gap don't worry about it we're going to fix that later and the next one i'm going to i'm going to pull up one that you can see that one's leaving a pretty decent gap i'm going to skip that one and try it here i'm happy with that so I've picked up two stitches and I'm going to just continue knitting in the round. On the same needle <clears throat> that I've just picked up with. And then just like when we did the cuff, you find your working yarn. Your next stitch is always to the left of your working yarn. Start knitting. Okay, <clears throat> so you'll follow your instructions for either uh, the little shorty thumb where you're going to switch to uh, the ribbing or the closed thumb and you're going to have some decrease rounds at the end. Um, and that will be all in the pattern because the next thing I want to show you is all those things I promised I was going to show you about how things aren't so bad. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. Okay, let me put this on my hand so you can see. I've left all these ends just for you. Now, this is the yarn I used when I attached the thumb. And you see, I have a pretty significant gap right there. It was unavoidable. I picked up my two stitches, but 
there's still a space there. This side, I'm happy with this side, but I wanna fix that. So back to my tapestry needle. This is a totally normal thing to do. This is not a mistake I'm fixing. This is just part of knitting gloves, part of knitting mittens. So I have this gap here and I have this end to weave in. Perfect. I'm going to use my needle to grab a couple strands. Take a look at that. That looks good. Now I'll poke it on the inside. And that looks good. That, that's all I needed to close up that gap. And of course I just pulled it to the inside and I'll want to weave in the end inside here. And you want to do your typical smiles and umbrellas weaving in the end. And I can give you a link to my video on weaving in ends. If this is new to you. After you weave that in a bit, you can just cut it. So that's finished. And now I want to talk about the weaving in the ends and making a tidy bind off. Like really right here, it's really prominent. You see how the last stitch of the first stitch of the row and the last stitch of the row, there's a major stair step. It's probably easier to see here, a major stair step. That's because when we're knitting in the round, we're knitting in a spiral. And so the first stitch of the round ends up being down here and the last stitch is a stair step higher. I'm gonna show you how to fix that on every single end you have to weave in with these mittens. It's just so handy that when you have something like this, there's an end to weave in. So I'm taking a look at the first V of the round and the, the V of the bind off. I'm gonna put my needle under both legs of that V and give it a tug. And look at that already improved so much. That's all it took. I'm gonna go back down into the last stitch of the round. Give that a tug. That looks great. If at any point I'm not happy with the way it looks, just pull it back out and try doing it a little bit differently, poking it down a little bit differently. And then to weave in this end, I don't wanna weave it in across the ribbing because that will stiffen up the ribbing and it won't be as elastic. So to keep the elasticity of the ribbing, I'm going to just pick up one leg of a V of, of um, what is the knit stitch on the inside, kind of wound around and around, and then back down the other side, but don't go all the way to the last stitch. You want to stop before the last stitch because when I cut this, I don't want that end to poke out past the, the bind off row. So we'll take a look at this and I can't even see where it was. <laughs> I'd say that's a good job. So that's how you're going to weave in the ends and close up the gap at the thumb. And I'm just going to assume you're going to have a gap. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. That happens. If you don't have a gap at the thumb, you had a, a lucky knit there. I think that's it for this section. Yes. Okay, that was the thumb. Now, the next section, we're going to talk about uh, the, the mitt top, doing the cable pattern and attaching the mitt top coming up. Okay, you should have a pretty basic mitt now, and it's time to add the flip top. In this section, we're going to do the picking up stitches for the mitt top, the cable pattern, and the little I-cord thing on top. So let's get started. Okay, here we are back at the finished mitt with no top. Uh, and that's what we're gonna do is attach the top now. You can see the top is the, uh, knit by picking up stitches right on the hand. And it's, it's a unique 
a unique way of doing this. I like how she wrote this, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. So <clears throat> we're going to pick up, we're going to knit the top right on the mitten. I suppose if you, if you want to, you could knit it separately and just stitch it on. But we're going to follow the pattern and knit it right on the mitten. And the pattern tells us to pick up stitches two rows down from the bottom of the ribbing. So I'm going to space out exactly where I want to do this by counting my rib stitches. And you don't have to do this, but I think it helps because it gets hard to see um, where you're going and to, to maybe, there's a good chance that you might jump up a row or jump down a row just because it gets, it gets tough to see. I'm going to pick up the right leg of each stitch one row below the ribbing. <clears throat> so I know that when I'm picking up the stitches and knitting them, I want to be one row below this guide. And I wasn't counting, but that'll get us going. Just something in a different yarn to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to use long circular for this. And again, these are collage square needles from an interchangeable set. And the pattern has us cast on some stitches and then pick up and knit here. So here I am. There's the stitch that I want that I marked. I want to pick up both legs of the V of the stitch below that, right? And the V is a stockinette V. I'm going to pick up both legs of it. And I'll tell you, before you get discouraged with this, this is, this is really the hardest part of the pattern, but it's just a few stitches. <laughs> You'll get through this just fine. And the next stitch, gosh, I'm glad I marked it because the next stitch was once I've got this and I'm pulling on it, the next stitch does get harder to see. And that is here. Just get yourself some really good light and be patient with it. Remember, each time you're picking up both legs of the V, and I know this can't be all that easy to see because it's hard for me to see, um, and it, it wouldn't really even make a difference with the color. I have my marked row, and I'm picking up both legs of the V of the stitch below it, and I'm glad I marked that row. Okay. You're going to pick up the number of stitches for your size. And when you're done, you will have, you can start knitting in the round. You can actually split the stitches in this case with magic loop. And just start knitting in the round and the mitten is just going to kind of flop there. <laughs> you can just kind of ignore it and knit in the round and just focused on the mitten top. <clears throat> So it's just a few stitches. You'll get through it. You saw that I got about halfway there and it wasn't so bad. Okay, the next thing I'll demonstrate is the cable pattern. Because even if you're new to cables, this is a good cable pattern um, for beginners because it's just one stitch at a time on the cable needle, not uh, you know six or 12 or something where you can end up with tension issues and I have this separate from the mitten just because we're going to focus on the cable pattern you can use any kind of cable needle you like I like these little short ones <clears throat> from Brittany that are a little thicker on the ends and thinner in the middle and when you first start your mitten top you're going to start with a couple few rows of the ribbing and then you're going to move right into the cable pattern which is a four round repeat and I'm going to demonstrate the first round here because all of the techniques are in there. You'll start out with some of the knit through the back loop purl one ribbing and then you'll dive right into the cable pattern. Up, 
no, I'm starting actually on the first cable round, which is round two. I looked over the pattern like, wait a minute, where, what, huh? Um, and now I'm going to do a left cable, one one left cable, and for this pattern, I'm going to slip one stitch to the cable needle and hold it in back of the work. And that's just gonna hang there. I'll knit one and then knit the one from the cable needle. And now I'm going to do a right cable, slip a stitch and hold it in the front of the work knit one, knit one from the cable needle. Okay, now that I've demonstrated that, let's talk a minute for about, about cables. If you're new to cables, you're thinking, wow, that's really cool. It looks like the, the stitches are twisted over each other. Well, they are twisted over each other. And the way that we make cable stitches look unique is whether we hold the stitches that we're flopping places with, whether we hold that in the front or the back of the work. And so that's why there's a difference. It makes, it makes a difference. So in this pattern, it's just one stitch that's held on the cable needle, either in the front or the back of the work. For a left cable, we're gonna hold it in back. For a right cable, we're gonna hold it in front. And the pattern's written really clearly for this, or for the whole thing, but you get to see me do it again because here we are back at another cable. I'm going to slip one stitch to the cable needle and hold him back, knit one from the left needle, knit one from the cable needle, and another one with a right cable in the front. And when we're not knitting cables, we're knitting the twisted rib. Okay, what I just demonstrated there, that's all you need to know about the knitting the top and the cables because on round four, you have another um, cable round and the only thing that's different is that the left cable and the right um, cable are out of order, you do the left, you do the right first and then the left. It's all very clear in the pattern. And then on odd numbered rounds, you will just knit and purl or knit through the back loop and purl. <clears throat> and it's the same on the other side. So you will not have a problem with that. If you understood what I did right there, you will not have a problem with this because the pattern's very well written and I have confidence you can do it. This is a great, simple cable pattern. You don't even have to keep a close eye on what you're doing. Okay, this last thing I'm gonna show you is the I-cord, and this is my finished, my finished mitten top, and let me get these stitches on a needle. Yours won't be reserved on a stitch holder. <laughs> Yours will be like this because the pattern tells us to get the stitches all onto one needle, because you're gonna work some decrease rounds to get here, get them all onto one needle, and now we're gonna work I-cord. <clears throat> and you can work the I-cord on your circular needles. I think it's a lot easier with double-pointed needles, but I know I sound like a broken record, so <laughs> you, can do, you can do whichever you like. And we want, when, when we work I-cord, we want the working yarn to be on the wrong side. Usually we want the working yarn to be on the stitch closest to the tip of the needle. We want this on the wrong side. Over here, okay? Empty needle in our right hand. I'm back. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any more decreases. This is a five stitch I cord. I had my sample ready to go and I doubted myself. So the working yarn is on the wrong side. I've slid it over to the tip of the left needle. And when I knit this first stitch, that working yarn is going to stretch across the back of the stitches. Okay, now this seems crazy. Working yarn's on the wrong side. Slide everything over. And that 
uh, working yarn stretches across the back of those stitches. It just feels wrong when you're doing it. <laughs> slide, and you can see you can do this with a circular needle, but it's a shorter slide with double pointed needles. Slide. Okay, you can see what we have there, but when you give I-cord a tug, it narrows up and grows a little bit, which is handy when you're measuring it because you get more out of it. But you can see all the way around, even though we had that working yarn stretching across this side of the work, it is a cord all the way around. And you'll follow the pattern to measure, and then there's a bind off, a bit of a bind off, and then you can use the tail end to Flip it around, poke it into the mitt, and weave in the end so that it is attached. And your button will fit through. And that's it. Once you have that little I-cord thing done and you can button it back. Oh, I guess you have to attach the buttons. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed making this pattern. Many thanks to Kramer Yarns for sponsoring this video and Vanessa Ewing for designing this pattern with five sizes. <laughs> That's so much work. I'm so impressed. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these. I hope they keep your hands warm. Good luck.